Welcome back. We're here to look ahead to Saturday afternoon's Premier League match between Norwich and Bournemouth. It's the first match between two of the newly promoted teams this season. Barnes, let's start with Bournemouth. Last time out at home to Leicester, a one-all draw. Yeah, decent result considering the way Leicester started the season. First three games, Leicester was so impressive, weren't they? Obviously, Riyad Mahrez, top scorer in the league going into that game. So for Bournemouth to get a point out of that before the game, they probably would have taken that. After the game... The late goal, the late man of um, Leicester's equaliser, that would be disappointing to take. It was a penalty all day long, there's no complaints about that, and Vardy obviously stuck it away. But to concede so late on, it's always going to be disappointing. Especially when they took the lead through Wilson's fantastic goal, his fourth goal in two games, and it's eighth and ten, so he's in good form, which is it's going to be really important for them. He's risen through the ranks very quickly in the league, so there were questions whether he'd be able to make the step up to the Premier League. But he started well, and if he can keep on fire, then that will go a long way to help Bournemouth keeping safe in the Premier League but as a result it's a, it's a decent one for them I think the match they might they may feel they could have got all three points there was a lot of incidents in the match the referee was very busy Bournemouth could have had a, a penalty late on themselves Leicester could have had another penalty even later than the one they did get so Robert Hoop could have got sent off for Leicester he kicked the ball at Wilson and then palmed off Tyro Mings in the face so there's a lot of things which could have gone another way which might have put them in, uh, tilted it maybe in Bournemouth's favour maybe in Leicester's favour on a couple of occasions so a one or draw they'll be pre pretty pleased with that I think I think they will be. You mentioned about Wilson there. I think the one thing with him is that he's... I think I would have said that him and Troy Deeney would compare quite well coming up from the Championship last season. I would have thought that maybe... I honestly thought Deeney might adapt quicker to the Premier League than Wilson. But you have to say Wilson's doing really well and he's sort of a really positive sign for them. But the real negative for me is, you know, well, they had two serious injuries in that game. You know, Gradle was probably going to be out for six months now. He's done ligaments in his knee and... I think Mings as well. Mings has done his medial and anterior cruciate ligaments. So he's out for about 12 months. Things so he's not even going to play this season. He was their record signing, eight million from Ipswich. You know, I mean, he hadn't been, really been in the team that much because he only came on against Leicester after Daniels, um, their first choice left back, went off injured. So they sort of lost two left backs in that game. Real blow. But I think Gradle's the one that they're going to miss more because he sort of got off to a slightly slow start. You know, he'd been great for Saint Etienne in League One last season, but then in the sort of last sort of two three games, he'd really sort of come to the fore with a lot of assists for this. I think he'd set up three of their. Uh, previous five goals I think it was so he'd really started to play well and for him to lose him like that is just an absolute crushing blow because he looked really good and if he'd started to sort of warm back to England you know he kept getting better they could have been a real force going forward because they've got so many good players Matt Ritchie Callum Wilson so many great players going forward but to lose Gradle like that and Mings I think Gradle more than Mings but to lose Gradle was such a big blow Yeah massive blow for them obviously they've moved to temper that a bit in the transfer market on deadline day by bringing in uh, Glenn Murray they're always in the market for a striker they talk about grabbing coming from Norwich but that never materialised Glenn Murray I think it's quite a shrewd signing he's, he's proven himself in, in the Premier League he, he can get a few goals and even if he doesn't start ahead of Wilson he, he's a good player to come on and he's a good penalty box striker and he weigh in with a few goals throughout the season for Bournemouth I think they've, they've impressed so far they've impressed me away from home I think at home they've got the I've mentioned it before, sort of the cup mentality, they, they get the fans behind them, but away, the way they play, I think suits uh, being away from home on the counter-attack quite a lot. I've, they've scored eight goals in the last two uh, away games, in, including the League Cup, which is a fantastic record, four against West Ham United, and we know how well they've done against Arsenal and Liverpool, so that's a very good result for them. And they played well against Liverpool against uh, at Anfield as well, obviously hit the post through Matt Ritchie in that game, perhaps deserve something out of that match. So they'll be very pleased with how they started the season, away from home particularly. They'll be confident of getting something out of this one, I think. Yeah, I think this is, they'll certainly maybe approach this one slightly differently, whereas you go to, say, Anfield, and you know you're not going to see as much of the ball. Here they're playing a side who finished below them in the Championship last season. It, it, this will be a much more evenly matched game, I think. And Norris, they come into this, they've had a fairly decent start to the season, I think. You know, they've struggled to sign as the players they wanted, but I think the start of the season, if you look at their results, hasn't been too bad. Last time out, though, before the international break was their worst performance of the season. They go to Southampton. 3-0 defeat there very very disappointing because they'd had some you know they could have easily picked up more points than they got from their first three games but then go to Southampton you know sort of behind right from the off and then Stephen Whitaker gets sent off in the first half you know two silly bookings you could argue that maybe they were perhaps a bit harsh but you can see why they were both given that's where especially when you're a team like Norwich who you know is going to be struggling to stay up all season you just can't it's just decisions that you just the manager just has to say that that's the, what he must drill into his players. Please don't do anything stupid because it can really cost us and it certainly did against Southampton. They held out right until just before half-time when Pelo scored and then Tadic with the two goals in the second half but they were never going to get back into that game after conceding the first. And Yeah, they'll certainly just... I mean, the international break came so now they've had two weeks off to think about it and a lot of their players won't necessarily be on international duty so they've been working hard in training and they look to get back at it here. 
Yeah, during that international break, I don't think there's been too much to boost Norwich fans, really. I think the chance window they had hasn't been a great one. Deadline day, they missed out on a lot of players. They missed out on a Phoebe, Gale, uh, Naismith. There was talk of Walters coming. They kept Hooper and Graben, but are they going to start? Obviously, Graben's suspended by the club now over his behaviour, trying to engineer a move to Bournemouth. So whether those two will start, I'm not sure. Uh, ahead of Jerome, especially, who started the season fairly well. They've lost Bradley Johnson, their player of the season last season. I think that's a big blow. That's a bit of a surprise move to Derby. For him to drop down a division, I think he's good enough to succeed in the Premier League. So that was a surprise to me. They get Jarvis on loan, but he's not the type of uh, player who's just going to like inspire a team. He's not going to weigh in with too many goals. He might get the odd assist, but he's not going to be the difference between them staying up and going down, I think. One thing that might be the difference there is their home form. They've started, they are still looking for their first home win of the season, but... They've played well in their two home games so far. I think they lost they lost the Palace three one on the opening day at home, but they deserve more from that. There was obviously mentioned Jerome's goal got ruled out. They were denied a penalty in that game. Perhaps deserve more from that one. And then the Stoke one, they got a draw there. Probably deserve more from that one as well. So they'll feel disappointed to have only got one point from a possible six from home. They'll look to rectify that and if they can repeat their performances from those two games, then they'll stand a good chance, I think. Yeah, I think they'll certainly look at this one, their first two games, you know, Palace and Stoke, two of those teams that we've talked about who might be pushing for the top six this season. So there's been a tough first two games at home. This one perhaps more winnable. What's your score prediction? It's quite a tough one to predict, isn't it? Bournemouth, they have impressed me so far this season. Norwich will be looking to bounce back from the Southampton one, I think. That was a bit of an anomaly considering the red card. I can see this one being a fairly even game. I'm going to go for one all. Well, I think there'll be more goals than that. I think... You look at Bournemouth's last away game, that 4-3 win at West Ham, I think there could be not quite as many goals as that, but quite a lot of goals. I'm going to go for a 3-2 away win to Bournemouth. So we've got one draw and a Bournemouth win. Thanks for joining us.